got in a new video camera today. It's the uh, Panasonic TM90. And I just want to do a quick video on uh, packaging this thing. So I just picked it up from Pure Later. I got it from uh, bnhvideo.com. Their price was really good. They had a sale on. So let's just open this thing up here so we can see it. Get into the camera shot here. Alright, here we go. Okay. Let's open this thing up. Carefully. Alrighty. So here we have it. My Panasonic HD CTM90 HD 16 gig flash camcorder. SKU number is PAHDCTM90. Okay, let's get this thing out of the box, see what we got. Just nice packing to keep it still. And there we have it. There is the box. I'm familiar with how these things look. So, let's see, here's the part number. Here's what the camera looks like in the box. I'm just going to carefully open this. That way, for any reason I need to reseal it, I can do that. Okay. Now this video is actually being recorded on a HDC TM90. So this one is going to be mine that we're opening right now. So here we go. In the box we have, let's so we'll fold this here. And we open it up. I love these cameras. I've been testing this uh, one that I'm using to record this for a little while. So here's the HD Panasonic HD, uh, what is that called? AE3 HD Writer software. If you can see that, it's not too washed out. Where I see we're getting a lot of a lot of light here. Um, I think this camera is a little bit overexposed. I have it on manual and I forgot to put it back on automatic. Let me see if I can do that right now. It'll work. Not sure if I can switch midstream. Looks like it can. So right now, looks like we are in auto. Okay. And now the lighting is much more balanced. Yay! Now we can see what we're doing. Okay, let's hold this up again. So the Panasonic uh, HD Writer software, AE 3.0, which uh, can do some things with the video quite quickly. If you need to just uh, crop the video and stuff like that or just add some quick titles and stuff. I tested it a little bit and it works quite well to do that. And obviously here's our manual and so this thing comes with some cables, a shoe adapter. So this shoe adapter is for of course if we want to use other devices that require a shoe adapter such as lights and microphones and stuff like that so here's the shoe adapter which just plugs into the back of the camera and here is our cables and this is the RCA cable I think which I believe it goes from HDMI, mini HDMI into the RCA so it doesn't come with a HDMI cable for the camera itself so in order to use it that way I'm going to have to get a HDMI cable probably at Monospace because they like their prices and here's a USB cable so it does have a USB cable to connect it so that's just fine and here's our other cable um, okay the camera itself 
nicely wrapped up. Ah, it's got smudges. But anyways, other than that, it looks really good. As you can see, so this is what this is being filmed on currently right now. So the battery goes in the back. And uh, there's the front of the camera for what it's worth. And we have our zoom. This thing takes great still photos as well. I think it's at 5 megapixels and they come in very, very clear. And if you want to put an SD card in, it goes in the bottom. And of course, you can mount your tripod mounts and get your handle and all these things. So we'll put that there for the moment. With its 40x zoom, of course, the power cord, which connects to the power adapter. And the power adapter here. So you can see our power cord goes in here to the end like that. If you can see that. Got a little bit off frame here. And so, but anyways, in order to uh, run this camera while it's plugged in, what you do is you open the side here and plug the power into here. And that way you can run the camera uh, with it plugged in instead of operating it on the battery. And I believe that will work whether it has a battery in it or not. Now this thing does not come with a separate battery charger. The, the, the camera is the battery charger. And so the battery goes in on the back here. So you can see that it just slides in and snaps like that. Now the battery is in place and in order to charge the battery you have to plug the unit in and plug it into the wall. The manual recommends uh, I believe that you plug it into uh, the camera first and then into the wall. because That's what it said in the manual when I looked at it. And so here's our AV port and here's our HDMI port and our USB port and then we have uh, this is our shoe adapter release right here so if we had our shoe adapter in which we'll take right here which actually slides in the back just like that so it's in there pretty secure right now but to release it we come to our release here and then we just pull it out so that's how that goes in we don't need the box anymore as I knock things over. Um, that's pretty much it. So this one is going to need to be charged and whatnot. It also has an LED light up front and uh, it actually works uh, pretty decent in dark areas for, uh, for really close up shots type thing. It doesn't work so great for, you know, if it's a little distance. Like if you're standing in complete darkness and you point this thing at the ground uh, with the light on, uh, what will happen is, is that you will see it, but you'll just see like a spot on the ground and it won't come in very clear. But if you're close up, yeah, it actually does add some to it. And this camera has lots of little features. Um, external mic. Uh, one thing that I love, it has uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second. So you hit the button here to put it into that mode and uh, that's a pretty high rate. That's a really high rate frame rate web progressive, so you get a full 60p scan. So each, all 60 frames are a full uh, resolution rather than like the 1080i, which is a half resolution per frame and that's interlaced. So you have that option, which is super cool. This thing also has an auto off. If you close it, when it's open, it automatically shuts off. You also have an option to use the power button, which is right up in the corner here and the power button um, will also shut it off and um, but normally it won't need to be used so if you use the power button to shut off the camera and then you open the lens after like the, the LCD display after you've shut it off with the power button the camera will not power back on you have to use the power button to turn it back on so it remembers the last, last way it was used so if however you close it when the camera is on it will automatically shut the camera off unless it's in recording mode then it won't shut off and then when you open it, it automatically comes right back on this is great if you want to do some things for uh, quick easy use uh, so if you're you know need to close the camera for a few minutes to shut it off and then you need it to, to come open and start recording quickly again then it's quite good for that the microphone is on the top here for playback 
So um, that's where the audio comes from when you're playing back videos on the unit itself. And uh, it also has a microphone up front here for doing the recording. Another little feature that I like about this camera is um, the lens cover itself. It's completely automatic. So when you turn the camera on, the lens cover opens up, and when you turn the camera off, it closes. And uh, that's a good feature. Not all the Panasonics do that. I checked one of the other Panasonics out, and uh, I think that was a 80 series. What one was that? HDC. Oh, I can't remember anyways, but it was an 80 series. With the, it was just the camera that was really on par with this one, uh, except for it didn't do the 1080p at 60 frames per second, and uh, it had a 120 gig hard drive in it. But that particular one, when you open the camera, the lens would open, but when you close the camera, uh, the lens, however, did not close, and you had to close it manually. And I found that a little bit aggravating, um, just because you know it's just a matter of time before the thing gets stored, but the lens left open by mistake or whatever and can lead to potential damage and I wasn't excited about that part of it. Um, also this thing here uh, can take an adapter on the front here and you can put on the 3D lens uh, from Panasonic. Again the other camera which I can't remember the name the model name right now but the other camera didn't have that option either so it's a couple options that this one has. The trade-off is, is the other camera had the 120 gig internal and this one only has 16 gig internal which is about an hour and 20 minutes on the 1080p 60 frames per second or maybe about two hours and 40 minutes two hours and 30 40 minutes on the 1080i um, sort of thing which is longer than the battery will last uh, for it anyways the battery's new battery uh, of this rating because this uh, the other other battery you can get for it actually I think it's about double the power that this one is so I think this one's around 1700 milliamp hours, something like that. And yeah, 1790 milliamp hours. And the other one, the replacement battery you can get for this, I believe is somewhere around 3200 milliamp hours. It may even be higher than that, uh, which would mean it would be basically double the battery life, which is really useful when you're out and things like that. Also, you can get an external charger um, which if you had a secondary battery would be very useful. Uh, I think I'd like to have it even just for one battery. So those are the things uh, that I'm going to have to look into. So this is a great little camera overall and this is my amateurish review. I've been trying this camera out for a week and this is my own model right here now and uh, very excited about uh, keeping this thing and using it and uh, the quality is unbelievable uh, when uh, when you're using it. The sharpness and all that stuff when you're, especially when you're outside, even inside if you're if your lighting is set proper, uh, which might not be the case with this particular video because I didn't take much care to do that for this. I just wanted to get this thing open. I was excited to to just get at it. So other than that, yeah, good little camera um, for the money. I would recommend this to anything anybody. Now on uh, B&C uh, where I ordered this one, it was um, only $419 for this camera US. Now then I had to pay shipping and I also had to pay uh, for uh, duty because uh, obviously, right, I'm in Canada here so and I ordered this from the States. But when I found this camera here in Canada, it was for five hundred and seventy nine dollars and that was a, that was a sale price I think the regular price was five ninety nine or maybe even more than that so to find this for the price that I did I got this to the door for less than five hundred dollars so that was a considerable savings so I'm very happy about that so anyways um, I recommend that if you're looking for a mid-range HD camera that you check that thing out it is worth it